Hello fellow builders and welcome not just back to the bench but uh, 2021. You know, I think we've all taken this collective sigh of relief because we all realize what kind of a dumpster fire 2020 was. And since we're all kind of like, it's over, it's done, moving forward, I think we can all do this. We can do this together. So let's get started. So, oh, I forgot a piece. Stand by. Let's get started. These are actually two different print files. On top of that, they were printed two different ways. So this one was printed like this, and this was printed, you know, this was printed upside down, this was printed right side up. The My first helmet, I printed upside down like this. I was having some problems with it, and some of the things you're, you're taking into consideration is your, your finished edge. So in printing it straight up like this, you're going to get all this, you know, the dome all the way to the top is going to have this nice finished look to it. But some of your overhangs, when it goes to print, because it's printing in layers. So my overhang here, I'm going to have to work on it. Remember the eyebrows. Remember that. This one, I've got it in the same place, except on this one, it's going to be on the bottom. This might be a little bit easier to fix. The biggest reason... I will probably always print these helmets upside down is because, well, I don't know if I can tell not to do it, but I get to, got this whole business here. So when the, the, the printer is looking at any overhangs or whatever, and that's why it printed this whole centerpiece. That is a waste of a whole lot of material. Alright. So we're just going to get rid of it. Look at that. That's... Heck, that's half a helmet right there. So we're going to get rid of that. But, like I said, I was having problems with the printer. And... I'm... I, when I went to reprint it, I reprinted it upside down. And it stopped at... Two. So this stopped at 98%. I started a new print. It stopped at 2%. Luckily enough, they won't. The two pieces fit together nicely. Now, here's the problem that you have. When you print it this way, You get all this business. You gotta fix all of this. And you get it off. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. So, this all needs to be fixed with, you know, Bondo, which isn't that bad of a deal. So, on this helmet, I only had this much to have to do. I wouldn't have had this at all. It would have been perfect. So you need to decide when you're doing the helmet which which one you're going to want to repair. But this one, I've been wanting to work on the repair for this one just to make sure I can do it. So do it the way I wanted to do it. Okay, so obviously I bondoed this to cover up all the schmutz, and I did it in layers across the ridges because there's boom, boom, boom. So I tape, I tape this down because I didn't want putty there, put tape across there, bondo, sand, and I put tape there and had tape here, bondo, sand, and then I guess I did it that way. Anyway, so that should mean if we take all this tape off, we should be good to go. Hmm. 
not bad. That's not bad. Especially since I know the rest of this needs to still be bondoed and sanded. So this is to a point where that uh, arrow. This is to a point where I can go on ahead and glue this to this. and then finish Bondo the rest of it. Now, I also, to help reinforce this, I'm going to fiberglass it. So, bought a little fiberglass kit and what we're going to do is go in, once this is all glued down, I'm going to flip her upside down, we're going to put a Bondo patch, a fiberglass patch, in there just to reinforce this and make sure we're getting good structural adhesion and it's not going to, hopefully it's not going to crack any time in the future. That might be overkill to do the fiberglass, I could probably do some JB Weld or something like that, but I want to be sure. So that's where we are. Okay. Made the little stand. I don't know if it's necessary or not, but I like it. At least it's not sitting on, just kind of sitting on the desk all the time or whatever and messing up your bottom edge. You never know what's going to happen. You don't want to mar anything. So, for right now, it's got a nice little stand. I'm happy with that. Okay. So, we're just going to get this sucker glued down. Just gonna get some glue on here. And get it tacked down. That's gonna be step one. So the front side looks okay. It lines up pretty good. The back side I got a little bit of an overhang, but like I said, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to put some bondo on here and putty and sand and do some feathering anyway. So we'll tackle that in a little bit. Look at that. Look. Okay. But Okay. That's part one. Part two is going to be the Bondo. Now, the thing about it is This is a 18 by 24 sheet. Got it at Menards and it was $12. And that's way more. I think I just probably just. Let's see if we do. So roughly six inches. Six inch. So it's roughly four by six. If we do a six by six, six by six square of the, this material, we should be fine. Normally you would want to rough up the inside to give yourself something for it to stick to, but since we had to remove all this business and you get that roughness, that acts as a perfect gripper. Because it's going to be the inside, we really don't it need it to look pretty. We just need it to hold. I'm going to tell you, sometimes when you're doing stuff and you're not sure, you're reluctant to just dive in. And that's okay because I'm reluctant all the time. I the time I don't know. I, I just I make it up as I go along. Most times that works out. <laughs> most of the time. 
every once in a while you run into an issue but for the most part you up and save you for another day because trust me there will be a in theory at this point I should be able I can take that stuff off but it makes for a nice level surface to work on to do on the right side up so we're just gonna leave it for figure out exactly how much of this we need. Boom. Laid it down, put a layer of the resin in there, laid the fiberglass on top of it and it's absorbed it in. And so now I'm just going to use what little bit I've got left to get in there and get the bits of fiberglass that are dry laid down and that should make the crown of this really really strong. But, very important, definitely do this in a well ventilated area, because it does not smell good right now in here. So while you are curing, over here, gonna bring you over might as well get a little bit of Bondo on this guy gonna work on it a little bit so we'll just get as you can see working on the helmets is not a one-day project it's it takes time you can only do certain sections at a time, you have to let it dry, it's kind of chilly here, and that absorbs some of your time. So you have to have something else to do in the process. What could that be? of looking for something else I ran across this the Johnny Quest Dragonfly first of all I had no idea it was called the Dragonfly all you know is you see that segment of you know the intro and it shows the plane flying by and I'm like okay that's a cool plane here's the thing you look at the picture of the, the dragonfly and Johnny Quest all it's it's all 2d animation so everything looks flat so it took me a little bit to get into my head the transition from a two two-dimensional thing to a three-dimensional thing because it just in my head it didn't match and so when I the box was cool Johnny Quest got home and I popped it open and I, I was, at first I was like, eh, well, okay, I'm not sure if that's translating or not, but over time, I began to love it. So, what I wanted to do on this particular kit, it, it's very simple. The instructions are, it's a one-pager, basically. You open it, you glue the pieces together, you put it on the stand, you're done. 
but I wanted to try something I've never tried before. And this is the Tamiya Panel Line Accent Color Black. Because the Dragonfly is just white and it needs something to help help it along. So the other thing I was gonna do to help it along was to, I was gonna paint it white, but I was gonna do a pearl coat on it instead of just like a semi-gloss or whatever, because, I mean, look at Dr. Quest. Look at that, that goatee configuration he's going got going on there. Dr. Quest is cool, all right? And so he's smart and he's cool. And a guy that smart and cool and stylish is not just gonna go for regular white. He's gonna have a little bit of pearlescence going on there. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna put this thing together and see what it comes out with. So let's get to it. Okay, so we're at the point where we got the silver on there, got the white on there, and just as I was gonna do a second second coating of white, I noticed that it's not quite together as tightly as I want it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, to protect the paint that I've got on there. Just took some tape and folded it over on itself so it's not sticky. But I want to do a little bit of a clamp on there. Just to bring those two pieces a little bit closer together. And then I'm going to use, instead of using the, the quick glue, I'm going to use the Tamiya cement, extra thin cement. And I'm just gonna drizzle it down there and just let it sit for a bit. And that should get these two pieces to be one. Okay. I already tried this on the other side and it came out kind of messy and it kind of terrified me so we're gonna try again on this side I, I think I might have I, I, th I I'm at the point where I think I'm gonna get what I want to get but this stuff really really is really really runny so I want to take off as much of the little brush as I can and when you just touch it it just kind of well a little bit more on there it just kind of through capillary action goes where it needs to go so well that's there you go hopefully you could see that maybe not but we're just going to hit the panel lines if I have to be honest Personally, I think I've made a mess of this thing. Put the panel lines down, let the stuff dry, and then gently rub it off. I think the, the lines went on way too thick. And then when I'm trying to take it off, I feel like I'm pulling way too much out. Once I get started, pretty much all or none, you gotta go do it all. all right. Okay, I think that looks good right there, like that. Other thing is, I'm working on white. And that might be the other part of my problem because it's smearing. If I were going, if this were a tank or something else, I think I'd have been okay. But, I feel like that's way too dark in some pen lines and not dark enough in others. So we're gonna do a spritz. We're gonna go over it with an overcoat of white to pull some of that back. See if we can pull some of this back. I'm 
not feeling really good right now. Right now I feel like I really messed this thing up. Okay, we're gonna call this a 50-50. There are some things with the model, like with the cockpit, like this window and this window are not identical. It's, you could, it's small and it's a small, it's not even really a complaint, but with the maybe simplicity and inconsistencies of the model, I don't feel as inclined to be as as much of a perfectionist, especially going from a 2D object to a 3D object. I'm going to put more of that on me and my inability to make it pop than I am on whatever shortcomings there may be with the model because I think the model is overall fantastic. Um, the panel line paint, the one thing that I always, it's hard for me to be random because I'm trying to, I wanted to hit, make sure I hit all the panel lines and then when I was pulling everything off, I was trying to do it equal. So it did not come, it didn't go on equally. It didn't come off equally. So what that has done is it's made its own randomization. So, as far as the pearl paint on top, I don't think it did much for the model. You really can't see. I sprayed it over some black and I could see the, the, the glitter of the flakes in there. So maybe using the pearl over white wasn't a good call. But at the end of the day, I think, um, I think it, it came out pretty well. So I threw some pictures up there so you can see what it looks like up close. Before we go, I'd like to go back into the garage so we can look at the helmets again and bring this thing full circle. So off to the garage. Okay, back on the helmets. And I actually made a decision today based on working on these. One of which was there are two ways you can go to filling the grooves or whatever. You can go with the glazing putty or the body filler. For what I'm doing, I like using the glazing putty because it's a finer material. It's, it's your final coat and you're not really, you're not really filling deep uh, areas. And you're squeezing it right out of the tube, you're good to go. Here, it's a two-part mixture, and it's been a long time since I had gotten into this, and it stinks to high heaven to use. You have to mix it properly in order to get the right or right consistency, the right color or else. I mean, you can get pretty close and be fine, but I don't know what happened here. I got some kind of separation, and because there's just that extra step of having to mix it and everything, I'm less likely to use this as I am to use a couple of tubes of that, of the, the glazing putty. So unless I'm doing a big project or actually working on a car, I probably won't be using the body filler too much anymore. Now, the other decision I made was when it comes to doing the sanding, this stuff is so fine that when I start sanding, I'm, I'm already laying out in very thin skim coat. So when I start sanding, I don't want to start with anything, anything more aggressive than a 220. Because anything, anything more aggressive than that, an 80, uh, definitely, uh, definitely an 80. I mean, you're taking some material off. And we're not really trying to remove material, base material, we're just trying to remove and contour the skim coat that we put on and make it nice and smooth, just like glass. So, that being said, uh, some decisions were made today. Oh, one more thing. 
I meant to mention this in the beginning. This is two takes on the same, same thing. So these are both based on The Mandalorian. And the biggest significant difference between these two is this, this helmet has more of an oval shape. And this one has more of a round shape. Now my helmet is based on this one here, which is fine. I mean, it works just fine. The one thing I did notice, though, when I put this helmet on and once I get my visor in there, and that could be, the, there's not a whole lot of room between the visor and my nose. So it's sitting like right against my face. It's not distracting or anything. It's just, I didn't even know that that was a thing until I put this helmet on. Because with this one, the oval shape, you have plenty of room forward of, I mean, it was like night and day. And neither one of these are right or wrong, in my opinion. Um, the, the mohawk, as I call it, on this one is a lot wider. The grooves in between are bigger than they are over here. It's just personal preference. I, I like them both. Um, so, uh, this one is basically one solid piece done. This one has the ears that need to be, which I've already got printed, but have to be glued on. That right there gives you all kinds of, of ability to customize and make it your own. But we're gonna, we're gonna work on this some more, and, and I didn't realize it, but the uh, Johnny Quest Jet is my first completed model of 2021, so good on that. All right, it's that time again. You got to go build something. 2021 is going to be a better year for both you and I, so let's, let's get, our, get our hands dirty and get to it. So until next time. See you.